If you guys need FIFA 18 Ultimate Team Coins, go and check out x3game.com. Their link will be down in the description. Use code CAPGUN to get yourself a discount. Just before we get into this episode, guys, I realised that I need to update the checklist. Of course, David Silva managed to squirm his way into this team of the week, which means he needs to be added to the informed column of the Manchester side of the checklist. Oh, it's going to be a hard journey, I think, this one, if everyone's going to be getting informs, especially the top-rated players. They're going to be worth absolute bank. It's going to be disgusting to try and get our way to those players. If you do enjoy this episode, make sure you smash a big thumbs up. Let's see if we can get 5,000 likes on this episode. Make sure you check out episode number one. Let's get into this. You are right, guys, it's Capgun Tom here, and welcome to episode number two of Milan Manchester Madrid. Now, if you missed the first episode, I'd highly recommend you go back and watch it. It will basically give you all of the information you need to know about this series. Effectively, in a nutshell, we are trying to build the best AC and Inter Milan teams, the best Man United and Manchester City teams, and the best Atletico and Real Madrid teams, all in one series, kind of like my previous series, like Road to Real, for example. But they're all rolled into one. No FIFA points, only trading and playing is allowed. And uh, yeah, we started off not too badly. We opened up some packs in the last episode. We actually got some um, AC and Inter players straight away, straight off the bat. So that was a good start for us. I decided that we would start off with the um, sort of like AC and Inter team, just purely because it was slightly cheaper. And now I'm starting to work my way through the objectives on the dailies, as you saw there, I was looking through them, I was trying to pick up rewards and stuff. I get sort of like a little bit of OCD on that front. When I start something, I really want to sort of like finish it off, get it done, and those sort of like starter tasks are things that I just have to get finished for my own sense of, I don't know, fulfillment or something. Now, because I haven't played all that many games of FIFA, I think we uh, played maybe two games in Division 10 last episode, um, We, I decided, you know what, I want to keep on playing. And uh, so we went into a game here, and you can see we came up against a very nice uh, BPL squad. It was uh, probably a lot better on paper than our team, but that doesn't mean that we're not going to win because we get Borriello through in the 35th minute. Of course, Borriello is just a player that's filling in until we finish picking up a full AC and in to Milan team. Borriello again involved in this goal. Should have scored with here with Silva, but unfortunately the goalkeeper sells it. However, Nine Golan is there to get on the rebound and put it into the back of the net. So we are 2-0 up. We're looking pretty good. He had a great chance to equalise there, but the referee blew it as offside. I'm not sure if it was offside or not. I assume it must be because I doubt the uh, computer will ever give a... Uh, a dodgy offside rule, I think it will always get it exactly right. Now you can see there we end up winning this game 2-0. It's a good way to start off the episode, of course. <clears throat> and uh, you can see there we now are on six points. Our record is 2-0-1 after we came up quite a formidable opponent in the last episode. Now I thought, we need to get some players in this squad because we're using a lot of players that ain't from Milan. So I went away and put some bids down on uh, Vrnokia there from Inter. Got to put down a 350 bid on Gomez from AC Milan. Also Zapata as well. Apparently you can pick him up for 350 coins, potentially on a bid. No one out bids me on this one. And I also went away and put some bids down on, uh, Gig I'm not even sure how to say his name, Gaglia Dini. You guys spell it phonetically for me down in the uh, comment section. That would be really helpful. And then uh, Vicino as well, I put a bid on. Now we didn't win uh, Gaglia, whatever his flipping name is, but we did win Zapata, Ranocchia and Vicino. Uh, we did get bit, oh, bit on that Gomez as well. So um, not looking too bad. We're already making uh, inroads into this. We've got a lot of coins and I am going to be doing a really awesome trading method later on in this episode. You guys are going to make so many coins off it. I've been using it. I'm already a couple episodes ahead. Um, so I've used it quite a bit and I'm happy to reveal it now so you guys can go out and potentially make some coins as well. We get all of those new players into our squad. It's looking pretty good. And of course we are going to get those all important check marks on the checklist. We've already got quite a few considering it's episode two. We ain't doing too bad. So we're going into another game again in Division 10. As I said, as soon as I start something, I can't not go and finish it. And Division 10 for me right now is unfinished business. Our opponent is using a full BPL squad, which would be pretty easy to beat if he didn't have a lone Lacazette, lone Gunhuan, and lone Mkhitaryan in there. They're very, very strong players, but that doesn't mean he's going to win because you can't be a better player and have a worse team and still win. So there we go. We start off very close to not scoring but we do end up actually scoring. The ball just slides past his goalkeeper. I swore, swore that he was going to get there first. So we are 1-0 up. He had a chance to equalise, but 
didn't take it, and then we should have really done better here. I mean, like, this is just, just shows how rusty I am. I mean, I should have slapped that into the back of the net the second it hit Boreal, Boreal's feet, but I took a couple of touches, and uh, luckily I still managed to score. Now, our opponent managed to score an absolute banger with Lacazette to make it 2-1 here. As you can see, gets it into feet, just rolls me, and then, whew, that's what 150,000 coins will buy you, those sorts of goals at this point in the game. I would love to have my hands on a player of that caliber. Maybe we're going to manage to do it after we start using this trading method that I'm going to show you in a bit. We're definitely going to make a whole load of coins on it, as I've already started using it and already know. Now, our opponent gets a red card here. Unfortunately for him, his centre-back gets sent off, and uh, it meant that he was still throwing everything he had at me, um, but when I was going forward, it obviously meant that there was a lot less to contend with, and uh, we managed to make it 3-1 to finish it off in the 90th minute. Maori, I believe, getting his, maybe his first goal for the club? Not 100% sure on that one, but um, yeah, decent stuff, a decent game, 3-1 is the final result, we win by two goals, and of course that means that we've got more points on the board, that means we're on nine points out of uh, a possible 12 that we've had so far, just another win will see us promoted. Now I thought, it's time to go get us a striker so that we can get Borriello out of the squad because he's uh, doing too much for us and he's not actually a Milan player. So I had a look at what Inter had and I thought, you know what, Edda and uh, Icardi may be a little bit too much at this point, although I do have 24,000 coins, I do want to save some of that back as you'll know from previous series I like to keep it back so that I got a lot of coins to trade with and therefore can make more money in the in the in the short term it's more about making money in the short term than sort of like um, the long term but anyway you can see here that we've uh, that we're looking at Kalinic I went and had a look how much he was going for found one there for a 400 bin was like hell yeah he's got four star weak foot and three star skills let's get that we also put a bid on that Piemonte for 150 coins because I was like, why the hell not? And uh, you can see we're going to add both of these guys to our team right now. So Kalinic is going to be going up front with uh, Andre Silva. And we've got quite a nice even balance at the moment between Inter Milan and AC Milan players. Uh, it's going to be a real shame when that uh, Rajanine Golan's loan spell is over because he has been a big player for us. And, uh, yeah, I don't really want to lose him, I don't want to lie. Anyway, we get to update the checklist here, as you can see, Piemonte, um, he gets, or Pinamonte, I'm not really sure how to say his name either, he gets the check mark, as does uh, Kalinic. So, looking good, and I thought, why not? We've got some new recruits, let's get straight into this game. Come up against this 4-4-1-1 team, and he's using sort of like a... It's almost like a Serie A meets MLS kind of thing that he's got going on. It's not all that strong, and I was pretty confident that we could get a result here. Kalinic early on gets a chance there, hits it across the face of goal, but the goalkeeper makes a good save. Nice little lofted ball in, and then Kalinic sets up Nine Golan here as he was running through. And uh, he pits away no problem on his left foot there at all, Nine Golan. No problem whatsoever. So, uh, yeah, we end up managing to uh, to get into the lead. Now, he has a nice little passing move there, which ends with a Giovinca chance, but it doesn't go in. Nine Golan somehow just finds all the space in the middle of the pitch right there, and he just slides that one away. Now, we end up conceding here so bad. Like, in what world should you be letting Giovinco score a header? He's like 5'6". He should never be getting a header, but in this game he did. The defending was bad, and uh, I am just a little bit rusty, you know. I do need to just get my uh, sort of like sharpness back. As you can see here, runs his goalkeeper out, and I had the sort of composure just to hold the ball long enough to work it across the bo box to Kalinic, who does get himself a debut goal. Good work, Kalinic, and he makes it 3-1, pretty much kills off the game. But our opponent is having none of that. You can see here he gets in, and uh, he has a great chance. It's saved by the goalkeeper. It comes straight back out to his player, and he puts that one away to make it 3-2. But fortunately, that was the 90th minute, and as soon as I took kickoff, the referee, well, mercifully, mercifully blows the whistle and we do end up walking away with the victory there which is what we really wanted and of course that does mean another three points on the board the title is one we get i think two thousand coins for that plus the thousand coin unlock plus 500 for the actual game so we got a heck of a lot of coins for that game Okay, so now the bit you've been waiting for, the trading method, and yes, it is going to be revolving around silver players and sniping, specifically around Super League or Turkish League silvers, because of course there is that squad builder challenge for Charisma where you need to get all of the clubs completed, it's an absolutely ridiculous 
uh, sort of like squad builder challenge. It costs absolutely loads, especially at the start of the game, and there is a good chance that you can make some money off these cards. Now, as you can see, if you put in to the position any silver and Turkish league, nothing comes up for less than 350 coins unless something's just been listed. Um, I was like literally stunned by this method. I just couldn't believe it, and hence why I was so slow. I was like, this can't be true because. I can make so many coins off this method, it's going to be disgusting. And that's why I didn't even pick up the first couple of players, because I was like, you know what? I need to make sure this is real, this can't be real. But anyway, things are starting to come up thick and fast. We get our first snipe on a Syriac. As you see, I bought him for, I think it was like 300 coins. And uh, we can sell him on the lowest there for 750. Even if we get minimum prize for them, we'll still be getting about 400 coins for them. So we'll be able to, you know, pick them up for 300, at least sell them for 400. And there are a few absolute gems in amongst these Turkish League silvers that you can pick up for the like two, three hundred coin marks, and then they'll sell on for about three or four thousand coins. That's like ten times the amount of coins you invested. That is ridiculous. You can see I'm just showing a couple of the example snipes that I managed to pick up. Picked up quite a lot, and you can see how quickly they were coming. Like they were coming before the, I'd even managed to buy the last one. So I was doing my very best to pick up as many cards as possible. Um, was a little bit rusty on the sniping front, but we'll get back to it. And uh, I'm hoping that you guys can go away and make a whole load of coins with this technique as well. I've used it for like the next couple of episodes as well, because I'm a couple of episodes ahead. So I don't mind sort of like um, letting you guys use the method now. Uh, eventually I do get transfer list banned, which is kind of annoying, but these things happen and you can't really do all that much about it. As you can see, we have picked up absolutely tons of cards though, like loads of them, all for under 300 bin, uh, just sniping away and some of these bad boys will sell for like 2k as I said, so we'll be making a heck of a lot of coins. You know, we start with 25,000 at the start of that trading session, we've spent 9,000, we're going to make bank, like it's going to be absolutely disgusting. Um, some people have asked me about what will happen if a squad builder challenge card comes out for Milan or any of the teams that we're doing. I have said that I will not go for the squad builder challenge card. The reason for that is number one, if it comes out too early and it's a limited time one, I'm not going to be able to get it and that will completely ruin the series because I won't be able to afford to pay for the really big players if they do get one. Secondly, um, the other thing about it is, is that with squad builder challenges, it is a complete waste of money because you're making or you're selling a whole load or submitting a whole load of stuff that you can't get back because the card is untradeable. So it's just like a money dump. And then there's always a chance that player will end up getting a uh, better card down the line anyway. So we saw loads of it last year, like people getting those Footmas cards and then uh, an inform coming out and it being better than the Footmas card. So people were just like, damn, I've wasted all those coins. And that's something I don't want to get into. Now, uh, you just saw me play against the team of the week team. Um, that was for the, uh, the challenges. As I said, I love to complete stuff. So uh, that's what we're going to be doing for the next couple of episodes, making sure that everything Thing is done on that front. Um, we get a lone player as you can see for that. Um, we did a whole load of different challenges in that game. I didn't show all the goals because there was 19 of them by the end so I didn't think it was worth wasting your time showing 19 goals against the computer um, and you can now see what we're going to be looking to do in the next episode. So this is going to be the fourth iteration of the starter objective so we need to play some foot season, single player, you know just just generally quite easy stuff that if you've been around Ultimate Team for more than five minutes, you'll know how to do. But it's free coins for us, and I thought, you know what, we'll take everything we can get our hands on. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to be listing up all the players that you saw um, early on that I picked up and what the prices they're going for. Um, so we're picking up uh, Cinemir here for 250, listing for 950. That's almost four times the coins. Uh, we've got uh, Sadiku here, who we're going to be listing for 1700, who we bought for 200 coins. There are some absolute gems in amongst here. A lot of them will go for like maybe the 400, 500 mark to about a thousand. But there are a couple of really, really good ones in. Majority of them, you're going to be able to get 900 coins, especially since I was listing these up for nine days. Oh, not nine days, sorry. Uh, for one day because I was going away the next day. So I literally was like, you know what? I can put these up for slightly inflated prices. Um, and when someone comes along who needs it, they will buy it. And that is how these cards work because people need them for squad builder challenges. Some people 
don't have a choice on what they're paying for. They have to buy that card because it's the only one on the market. You saw there that I just listed up, I can't remember what his name was, uh, it begins with an S, but I bought him for 300 coins, listing up for 2.5k, he was one of the better ones. Uh, these average ones, Durak for 700 there, another one for 700, Akbas, uh, we're going to be listing him up for 1900. I mean, you can see the sort of money that we're going to be making. As you can see, my coins have actually been going up just whilst I've been listing these cards. So even though I'm listing them for a day, they're already starting to fly off the shelf, just showing you how effective this trading method is. Uh, Syriac, as you saw, he was the first one I managed to type, bought 300 sold for 750. I thought he would go for a little bit more, actually. Um, it's kind of interesting to see which ones do actually go for more because it really just depends on the team that they're playing for and if there's any other players in that position. Left back and right backs are especially good as you can see here. Uh, we're going to be listing this one up for 1900. Uh, strikers also tend to be pretty good. Centre backs are pretty good. Uh, generally centre mids are not all that good and uh, centre backs are pretty average and so are goalkeepers but all the other ones are pretty good. You can see here I'm going a little bit um, over the top for this one. I went put Simsek up for 7.5k because there was one on the market for I think 5k and every single other one was 10k. I was like I'm putting it up for a day, we'll try and have a punt on it and we'll have to see if it sells in the next episode. So there you go, loads of coins to be made, simple as pie. Just check what the lowest buy it now of the Turkish League Silvers are at the moment and then just put your filter slightly left, start sniping. If you don't know how to snipe, there's plenty of your videos on YouTube to show you how to do it and you can see here's some of the profit already we managed to sell that guru who uh, we bought for like 300 coins for 2.5k already he instantly sold like just see how much money we're gonna make off this like we're already back to the number of coins we started with another player sold right there we're already back to the number of coins we started with at the start of this trading session we sold five out of I think 30 players so we've got absolutely loads of coins coming back into the account right now it's good times for all um, guys I hope you have enjoyed the episode if you have make sure you drop it a big thumbs up that would be massively appreciated subscribe if you want to get involved and keep on watching these episodes also i live stream a lot of these so make sure you follow me on twitch.tv slash capgun tom but until next time i will see you all later peace